this video, we're going to be analyzing dating advice for some popular movies and TV shows like How I Met Your Mother and Crazy Stupid Love amongst many. We're going to see if the advice they give is legit or full of shit. So let's start off with one of the easiest one, which is a clip from How I Met Your Mother, which I think is at least partially somehow responsible for the incel epidemic. Crazy? Yes. How long have you been hung up on Robin? Eight years? And you're still killing yourself to fetch dumb little trinkets for her. That's crazy. That's more than crazy. I don't think there's a word for what that is. Actually, there is a word for that. It's love. I'm in love with her, okay? If you're looking for the word, that means caring about someone beyond all rationality and wanting them to have everything they want, no matter how much it destroys you. No, that's called being a simp, sir. It's love. And when you love someone, you just, you, you don't stop, ever. Even when people roll their eyes or call you crazy, even then, especially then, you just, you don't give up. Because if I could give up, if I could just, you know, take the whole world's advice and, and move on and find someone else, that wouldn't be love. That would be... That would be some other disposable thing that is not worth fighting for. But that, that is not what this is. And the quick backstory is these two characters have been friends with each other for five years. Five years, he's been just friends with her, right? So this is a really, really bad idea. Now, they make it look not so bad in the TV show, but in reality, this is a great way to catch a restraining order. But further than that, it perpetuates this idea that as a man, if you like a woman, that you got chase or you got chase or you got to be the one that's pursuing her. And if she's not reciprocating your interest at all, that's okay. You should just keep chasing her. In real life, if you're interested in a girl and she doesn't reciprocate that, you should move on. Why bother with someone who's not interested in you? That's purely a waste of your time. Don't chase these girls. And the furthermore, the more you chase the girl, the further she pulls back. So if there's a girl that you're interested in, right, and you really want to get with her, instead of chasing her and chasing her, what you should do is actually start getting with other girls, right? One, that will help you get her off your mind. You'll stop simping so much. And two, she will see potentially that, okay, this guy has options. And if I don't reciprocate his interest, he's going to move on, right? And that's going to be 10 times more effective than you actually pursue her and chasing her that's just gonna make her pull away pull away pull away until she blocks you gets a restraining order so this is so far dog shit advice let's move on to the next clip which is ghost from girlfriend's past or something like that when you first from michael douglas girl, you give her two compliments above the neck yeah i tell her she's got nice lips nice eyes nice hair she's intelligent her moral ethics whatever crap comes to your mind then just when she begins to think Okay, so let's analyze this. So there's nothing wrong inherently with giving compliments. Uh, does it have to be above the neck? I see what he's getting at. Like, don't compliment her ass or her tits or her legs. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I think a compliment is better when it's something that she had to work on, like her style or her tattoo, something that she wasn't born with, like the color of her eyes or her tits or whatever, right? So something that she had to work on, develop, I think is going to be much better a compliment than something that was inherently given to her, which is something that everyone's going to compliment her on. So I don't think it matters that much if it's above the neck or below the neck. It matters the topic of the compliment. That you're another, you know, vanilla nice guy that she can tool around with all night without getting naked. You insult her, flip the power dynamic, and you let her know you're here to play. It is All right, so this goes back to the idea of negging. Do not insult girls. That is a recipe for disaster. Now, look, if you do it correctly, right, you do it in a playful way and it's the right girl, then yes, that can work, right? But this is not something I would ever advise my clients to do. A much better way of looking at this is tease the girl, troll her, mess around with her, but certainly don't insult her. One thing that you learn tonight is this. The power of a relationship lies with whoever cares less. Okay, so this is very, very true. So this movie, uh, I think so far is 50-50. Yes, that is true. The power of the relationship, generally speaking, lies with whoever cares less. Also just the power of really any interaction. Amen to that, brother. One day you're gonna wake up with some chick spooning, you know, thinking about love. And at that moment, you have got to get up. You do not walk. You don't get your shoes. You run the hell out of there. Because maybe not the next day or the next week, but sometime in the future, you're going to get crushed again. Now, you don't want to feel that way, do you? No. No. Yeah. Okay.
Well, so this is kind of somewhat true, but somewhat not true. So he's saying that you don't want to get hurt, but then the confusion, conclusion he comes to is, well, never get attached, right? Well, I mean, sure, if you never want to have a relationship, but if you're interested in having a relationship with a girl, which I think most guys are, and this guy looks pretty sweet in the movie, so I'm assuming he is too, you have to at some point, you know, kind of give it a shot. We'll go out on the edge. But the key is that you screen very carefully. You take your time, you don't rush into anything, and you screen very carefully, right, so that the girl you start building a connection with isn't a girl who's gonna fuck you over right at least most of the time it's a girl that's trustworthy so uh, let's get down to brass tacks here say I wanted to pick up on that ice-cold blonde at 8 o'clock 8 o'clock how did you even see her uh, we'll deal with reflective surfaces at another time should I uh, get a handful of daisies and go hi you want to go to the disco with me uh no no no, because I might as well say, I'm a fag, let's be friends. So what would be a smart... So that's pretty true. Uh, yes, uh, you're either gonna get friend zone, she's gonna think you're a nice guy if you come in all being sweet, like, hey, I got flowers for you, random girl at the bar, do you wanna go to a disco? No. Hey, have some fun with it. What do you think? I don't know, I mean, you could maybe talk to the girl next to her? You know, maybe make her feel jealous? Hand of God, kid. I never felt like you were my son until now. So that's actually not too bad. Yeah, if there's a girl that you're interested in, now that could backfire if you're talking to the girl next to her. She thinks, oh, this guy's a player. Maybe I'm his second option. So there's potential for this to backfire. But the general theory that's based on is fairly accurate. So this movie, I would give a C or B minus out of, you know, uh, uh, on the system because it's got some good dating advice, some things that are outdated. I would say it's fairly basic, but again, what else are you gonna get in a movie? All right, let's now move on to Crazy Stupid Love. I think you're ready, pal. For what? To talk to a pretty lady and take her home and show her your gift. No, no I'm not. You're as ready as you're ever gonna be. You play your strengths, pal. That's all any of us can do. I'm mysterious. I'm, you know, good in bed. And you're... And I'm motherfucking Ryan Gosling. You are a, uh, you know, stable and employed adult. Jesus. You see this, this lady over here at 9 o'clock? You want me to hit on her? No, I want to hit on her. The one behind her. Oh. She's a total fox, right? Mm-hmm. You think she came to a crowded bar to have a quiet drink alone? She's hunting. She's just looking for an opportunity. To Wait, is that the same chick as 40-year-old virgin? That's pretty funny if they use the same exact love interest for Steve Carell. Settle for a responsible and stable adult. And I'd like her to settle for you. Oh, well, thank you for the ego boost. But you know what? Just because I've watched you pick up women doesn't mean that I know how to pick up women. You ever see Karate Kid? What does that have to do with anything? You know when he's teaching them to wax on and off, but he's really teaching them to fight? You want me to fight someone? What's the first thing I do when I go up to a girl? I buy her a drink. Yes, always. Without fail, you buy her a drink even if she doesn't want one, you insist. And do I talk about myself? Never. Never talk about Okay, Ryan Gosling, I am disappointed in you, sir. Uh, your first move is to buy the girl a drink. Now look, I'm not one of those PUAs that says you can never buy a girl a drink. No, sometimes it's okay, especially if you're on a date with a girl. But if I'm talking to a random girl at the bar, I will never lead with buying her a drink. That is literally what every single guy does. And it suggests that you buy yourself are not worthy of her company, you have to bribe her with something, right? So uh, I'm definitely not a fan of that. About yourself, always about her. Because bar banter is boring, the so worst. you put the impetus on her. She has to be the interest. This part so far is true, yes. Uh, generally speaking, talking about yourself is gonna be very boring. It's much better to ask questions about the girl, right? Or use the we frame where you're talking about you two as a unit or the environment than just talking about you. And that's a mistake a lot of guys make. They go up to girls and just talk about them and them and them. And the girl's like, oh my fucking God, get me out of here. Impress me, impress me with how interesting you are. It's a big game, game. Creepy, creepy little game oh, you play. that's judgmental, isn't it? Mm -hmm. At the end of the night, what do I do? Do I ask them to come home with me? No, you tell them to come home with you. They have no choice in the matter. It is your choice, and they are so overjoyed to have had the opportunity to make sweet, sweet love to you. Oh, my God. You did. You miyagi me. Huh. Take your ring off. Let's go. Just no talking about your kids, 
Your job. David Lindhagen. Don't you dare. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Just shut up. Hello. Hi. 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 Who are you? Hey, I'm Kate. Hey, Kate. Do you mind if I introduce you to I'm my... Cal. I got this. Hi. Pleased to meet you. And this is my friend Jacob. Hi. He's just leaving. Oh. Oh. So that's that's one way to treat people. How is that approach? Eh, it's a little bizarre, right? You're going in with a friend, uh, but I could see that working. It's like kind of novel. The girl's like, what the fuck is going on here? Am I on TV show or something? So not how I would personally go in and start the convo. I would just go in and be like, hey, uh, my name is Alex. Just shake her hand, sit down, start flirting with her. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is, I guess, one way to do. So can I buy you a drink, Kate? Oh, uh, no, thank you. I'm gonna buy you a drink anyway. Great Goose, right? Rocks, two limes. I'm five years sober. What can I get for you? See, this is why I do not like lines or routines. I don't like things that are robotic where you have a set agenda, right? And even though this may seem like an extreme example, you're like, who would this happen to in real life? I see variations of this all the time. Guys, okay, when you go talk to a girl, you should, uh, you should uh, tease her about her shoes, right? And something that someone does in one situation, and they're like, oh, uh, uh, your shoes are the worst. The girl's like, I'm not even wearing shoes, I'm wearing flip-flops, right? Like stuff like that I see all the time. So that's why you don't wanna have too much of a rigid of a plan. You wanna freestyle, you wanna improvise, and make shit up as you go along. Nothing, nothing. Go away, we're good. Please don't come back ever. Okay, so this is so far the biggest mistake of all his mistakes. Being rude to waitresses is gonna be a massive turnoff for the vast, vast majority of girls. Only the rich, snobby, OC type of chicks, which is less than 1% of girls, might get a kick out of that. For most girls, it's gonna be a massive, massive turnoff. Never be rude to people in your surroundings. It shows that you're not confident, that you're cocky, that you're an asshole. Never ever good look, so don't do that. <clears throat> so what do you do, Cal? I don't know, what do you do, Kate? I asked you first. I asked you second. <laughs> oh, seriously, what do, what do you do? Seriously, what do you do? But yeah, like doing stuff like that, and I agree, again, I'm agreeing that you should generally speak and ask the girl questions, but doing stuff like that when you get asked a direct question is really weird. Like if he wants to do that and then like, Oh, it's really mysterious. I'll tell you in a little bit. What do you do, right? You can kind of deflect like that, but just being like, I don't know, what do you do? It's gonna come off really weird, combined with the fact that he had his friend introduce him and the fact that he was rude to the waitress, this guy would have already been blown out. Are you really not going to tell me what you do? Uh, uh okay, I'm a teacher. Boring, come on. You gotta keep it interesting. interesting. This goes back to what we saw in the previous movie, which is insulting the girl. Never a good idea, right? Especially in the early stages, right? Like if you do stuff like that, the girl's just gonna be like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is this guy? Uh, excuse me, goodbye. It's me. Uh, uh, I studied at Oxford University. Boring! For five years. Wow. Teacher with an alcohol dependency who studied it. Now, okay, so if she says she studied at Oxford, right, you might want to tease her, right? You'd be like, wow, you're a smarty pants, right? That's much better than being like boring. Like, you have to be subtle, right? And it has to be somewhat layered and sophisticated what you're saying, right? So, teasing the girl, great. You know, fucking being rude to the girl, not so much. At Oxford, blah, 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 blah. England, yuck. You know, I think my friends just got here. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, you know what? I'm in corporate insurance. Oh, God. I have children. So, yeah, th this interaction in real life wouldn't have even lasted that long. Plural. And my wife was cheating on me with David Lindhagen, which I wasn't supposed to tell you about either, but I did. Nice what, to meet you. What were you supposed to tell me? I don't know. I don't know. I was supposed to say that you are the perfect combination of sexy and cute, which is actually something that I used to say to my wife. But now it's become corrupted, and I have 18 layers of clothes on. I'm wearing a shirt and a tie and a sweater and a suede jacket that just seals in all the heat, seals in all the juices. I'm just, it's all sweat under here. This is just sweat from here down. I'm with this, this sweater, this is called Slim Cut, but it feels like a scuba suit, and I'm looking at your breast. What's that about? You think I'm the perfect combination of sexy and cute? That's what you picked up from what I just said? Mm. Mm. 
So what he just did there is actually probably the best thing that he's done since the initial interaction. Now look, I would never go give that monologue, but if you're completely fucking up with a girl, just going radical honesty mode and just leveling with her can actually work. I'm not saying it's gonna work often, but at that point when the girl's like pretty much done with you, just leveling it with her and being radically honest, like, hey listen, I, I was just really nervous and I was putting on an act. My friend told me I should talk to you. I really think you're gorgeous, but I was so nervous and I didn't know what to say. That's actually gonna be your best chance in a situation like that, right? So that very last thing he did at the end has potential to work, but everything else was a massive fail. So hopefully you guys are seeing as we go through these clips that while there may be elements of truth in what Hollywood shows you, largely the advice is dog shit. And I think it creates the incel epidemic because again, it gives guys horrible dating advice and when it doesn't work out the way movies show you it works out, guys are like, what the fuck, I did everything right. I chased this girl to no end, I insulted her, right? I compliment her above the neck, why she's still not interested, which is why when it comes to dating advice, you wanna get it from the experts. All right, hopefully you guys found this video valuable and you can start off by giving me a compliment below the neck, by smashing the like button, hitting subscribe and click the bell for notification. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time.